This is Director Chats, the musical theatre podcast with me, Christian Bullen. On today's show, we have musical director Zhang Yu Mei from Taiwan. Hi, Mei. Hi, hi, Christian. How are you today? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm fabulous, thank you. Um, it's really nice to be able to speak to somebody in the same time zone as me. So um, uh, we're both in Asia and it's a nice morning and nobody's had to get up at a silly time to talk. <laughs> so it's a great, uh, great one today. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to invite you on the show so that we could talk all things musical theatre related especially to Asia, because I know that you work um, a lot in the musical theatre industry in Asia and um, mm. China as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to ask you, first of all, um, when did you start musical directing? Uh, I started the music directing from 2013. There's opportunity that the company have an audition for the musicians in Shanghai. And the company yeah. is a production, uh, it's a uh, Mama Mia, they, they did the Mama Mia and Cats in Chinese version, and they are looking for a musician. So I said, I just think that maybe I should send my resume to the company. And oh, wow. my resume is passed, so they asked me to fly to Shanghai for the audition face to face. Mm. Mm. So after the audition, I got the job, but I say no to them in my first in the first year because I'm really nervous about changing change it. many things like my life or my living style <laughs> and after a year after I think about uh, should I go or not I think maybe I should give myself a challenge for that so I take the job after a year I took the wow. job wow mm -hmm. so that was um, for which musical uh, it's for Mamma Mia uh, Mamma Mia year Mamma Mia's Chinese version. Mm. Ah, so it's mm. Mamma Mia in Chinese. Yeah, it's Mamma Mia in Chinese. But the staging and the, the uh, many things like design or sound or uh, choreographers, directors are the same. Yeah. Only the, the difference is between English version is we singing and talking, speaking in Chinese. Mm. Oh, so the songs are in Chinese as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Only in Chinese. <laughs> wow. So within that, um, that was kind of your first role. And, um, and what was your role within the production? Uh, I was uh, assistant music director in that production. Mm. And we have to follow the whole rehearsal, like a working from Monday to Saturday every day with the actors, with the choreographers, with the director. And that's a really different style from uh, when I was in Taiwan. We don't have to work with whole group for almost every day. Mm. Mm. So it's really... Right. Mm. So but, the musical director, um, were they um, a local musical director or that you were assisting? Or were they from the original creative team? Uh, they, uh, the company sent the original team to China. So we have a, a America music director who is our lead. And I have my boss. My boss is the Chinese, Chinese versions uh, music director. So we will have two group and work together. Mm. Mm. Uh, and um, uh, how do you communicate with, uh, a, can the musical director from the American musical director, can they speak Chinese or is, do you speak English? <laughs> Uh, I can I can speak English, so sometimes I will speak English with him, and we all have our translation. We we will have people who will translate the English into Chinese for us. So when we are working, sometimes the people who are not familiar to English will say something to the translation, or the translation will say trans translate it into English, and the mm. um, director will answer the answer. <laughs> then yeah. He, yeah, translate back to Chinese. Mm. And do you ever have any communication issues there because it's like translation or is it always fine? Uh, I think it's always fine, but there's something happened when I was in the different group in laundry. It's a Korean version because 
uh, Korean Korean group working style is very different from Western group, and we have some cultures different things like mm. uh, the director is the biggest, the, the topest, and music director is also the top, but not like as the topest, like the director in Korean. Not school. as high on the ranking, right? Mm, not not so sometimes. Uh, I'm talking about the notes I found in the in the score or in the book, and I'm saying something in Chinese with my actors, and my director will feel a little bit nervous because she will think maybe I'm talking some notes that she should see, she, she should say not from me. Mm. Right. So, mm, it's a because a different language, sometimes we will have something to communicate much more before we talk to the actors. Mm. Ah, okay, so that was in Korea. What was the name of that musical that you were just uh, talking about in Korea? <laughs> it's a musical named Laundry, and in, in Korean, named called Balle. Ah. Wash, <laughs> close. <laughs> and that, is that an original Korean musical? Uh, it, it's a it's a uh, it's a Korean musical for many many years. Uh, right. Uh, I think the show has been in Korea for more than ten years. Mm. Right, because the mm. musical theater scene in Korea is pretty developed, isn't it? And it's um, yeah. it's very popular to go to a musical in Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, they invite the company do that musical into a Chinese version. And it's really a good show. I mean, The Laundry is really a fabulous musical and it will make people feel warm after they see the show. So there are many company wants to do that show. And the, the company I work with who did, the Korean, who did the Chinese version, they talk about the Chinese version's production for many, many times. So, yeah, that things happen, just. <laughs> and would you say that, you know, it's a Korean, if it's a Korean um, musical, would you say that structurally it's any different from a Western musical, the style or the plot and stuff like this? What, what is different? I think the difference between the Korean musical style and the Western style is a way of telling story. Mm. Mm. Uh, people in relationship of Western style and people in the relationship of Asia style, sometimes it's really differences. Like uh, in very, very old style of Asian's love, people will think like maybe uh, if I like you, I'll, will, uh, when I... Uh, well, uh, Hold hands, right? When I hold hand, that means, okay, we, we will, we can guess what are going to happen mm. in the show. But maybe in Western, it's not only, not only hold hand. <laughs> <laughs> we need it a bit more graphically <laughs> in the West, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, we will, I, I will think that the uh, Asian romance is really uh, more imagination after the whole right. thing. Mm. So with regards to uh, Laundry coming to China, is there any, is it going to be in Mandarin for a start? Is it translated? Uh, oh, before they have a Korean versions international tour, they invite the Korean production come to Shanghai and come, mm. can, can to Shanghai, can to Beijing. And after that, they're going to have an audition for Chinese version actors. Right. And Chinese version production. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, when when these tours come to China, I've seen a few ones in English, and they often have subtitles um, okay. for people that can't understand the action. I'm not sure mm -hmm. what you feel about it, but it is um, a little bit difficult sometimes to read the subtitles and watch the show. How do you feel about that? I do agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh. And there is one interesting thing is that when I was in in Korean and I see a show of Jekyll and Hyde, they did mm. the company did the uh, English version 
they have an audition in America, an audition for America actors, but the production companies and the, the leaders of the companies like uh, music director, director, choreographer, sound designer, uh, besides the, co the director is America, but others people are Korean, are from Korean. So when I see, when I saw that show, the show is speaking in English, but they have a uh, subtitles in Korean. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they do something very interesting. They change the, the colors or the, mm, the words in Korean, like something happens in the stage and it like it, it, somebody say wow then you can see that in korea in korean's words and wow they change, they change. <laughs> huh. yeah i i find it really funny when i went to see um school of rock in shanghai <laughs> because oh. it was in english but oh. they had mandarin subtitles oh. but um the subtitles were slightly ahead of the action, so the audience would maybe laugh before um, they'd said it on stage, and it would just oh. it'd be quite interesting this double thing happening of the audience getting the information before the oh. people who don't speak Chinese, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I totally, totally understand. My friends in America, she say when, when they see the movies, there is no subtitles. So everyone will laugh at the same time. But back to Taiwan, she saw the movie and our, our people left before something, well, before something that really funny. Yeah. Movie. <laughs> and she left after other people. And she found that it's really interesting. Like you saw, uh, school of rock. Mm. Mm. I think translation of musicals is quite an interesting topic because um, you can't just kind of translate word for word, can you? It has to be um, make sense and meaning in the language that you translate into. Um, and mm. so, do you think that the Chinese um, version of Mamma Mia speaks well to the local audience, or is it just a exact copy of the Western version? Uh, we will change something into uh, Chinese, but it's for local, like uh, one of uh, Donna's friends, when she uh, go on stage, she say something local words. When we were, okay. moved to, like when we moved to uh, Shandong, when the production moved to Shandong, we will say Sandong's uh, locals word. And when the production okay. moves to Shanghai, we will say Shanghai's word, but only for a few sentences, not many. But mm -hmm. that local localization, even if it's very small, will make the audience feel quite uh, involved, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. And China is such a big country. There are different dialects. Uh, as you travel around so and I even find that myself sometimes I go somewhere different in China and I can't understand <laughs> um, what's going on because uh, the accent is different but I guess we have that in even in the UK we have many different accents it's, it's quite mm. yeah but I think that's really nice that they do that and localize the show so uh, is your work going more into Mandarin based musicals now or is it a bit of both like, are you looking into new musicals um, with your work currently, or are you still doing imported musicals? Mm, I think both. Uh, I will work in some new production, and also I'll do the Chinese Mandarin versions. In it depends on which company I'm uh, work with. Mm. Right. Mm -mm. Mm. And there are difference between working with the company who did the Chinese version and the company who did the original versions. Mm. There's some, what, what differences would you say? Uh, when I was working with Chinese version, uh, there is some SOP <laughs> from the foreign country, the foreign company. They will tell us mm. how to do that or what's the limit. And when I was working in original version, some things, sometimes um, 
most of times I have to find out how to work with my composers or my boss, the producers and our actors because um, we don't have a book already and we don't have a scores already. Mm. So it's more like a collaborative uh, journey to create something new as opposed to something that's already uh, kind of given yeah. to you. Mm -hmm. Which one do you prefer working in? Do you like working in new musicals or do you like having the book ready for you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, I like both. <laughs> 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 because, but, but it depends on who I collaborate with. Because if the company thinks that uh, it's okay to be like a do the production like good, not very, very top, not very good, is good. Then I will think, oh, the challenge is not big enough for me. Because I, many times um, I, in, I enjoy to work very hard in me in the production. So sometimes people or the, the producers or the the managers will say, oh, I think it's okay. And I will say, oh no, I don't think it's okay. I think we can do better. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great that you've got that attention to detail. Um, yeah. It's really important. Mm -hmm. That's probably why mm -hmm. you are doing so well uh, in your field because um, of that, you know, that you, you care so much. Mm -hmm. But it, it really so, depends. Yeah. It, it really depends on who are you collaborate with. Because if I agree, I think the team needs to be, you know, uh, have a good vibe, right? Mm, mm, yeah. <laughs> um, so we've talked a bit about, you know, um, what it's like to work as a musical director. What do you think makes a good musical director? Whilst we're on that note. Uh, the focus is the most important things because when we are running a show, there are many, many things will happen on stage. <laughs> <laughs> many many uh, surprise on stage. And our work is to solve the surprise things and don't let audience notice that, wow, today we have a surprise. <laughs> mm. but, yeah, do you mean sort of like I've had in my productions at times, uh, maybe a cast member drops a line or a cue line. And mm -hmm. as the musical director, you might not have been able to know when to come in for the next part of the music, stuff like that. Is that what you're, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that, <laughs> that's a part. That's a part. <laughs> yeah. So, mm. and, and also we have, uh, we need to be uh, a good training of music like in keyboard or in mm. guitar or, or we have to we have the we have to have the idea of orchestration mm. yeah mm. because so, sometimes mm. oh sorry, sorry. Where, where did you no it's okay where did you train did you train in taiwan uh, in music yeah I, I was trained in taiwan in music and my mother is a piano teacher so when mm. I was very little, she started training me to play the piano. And after I learned the piano, my mama sent me to learn the violin. And I was in the, well, I was in the band, uh, play, I play the percussions. Mm. Mm. Wow. So you've always had a musical background. When did you start learning piano? Like four or five years old. <laughs> 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 when, the, when other kids are playing around, I was asking to stay in the room and practice. <laughs> wow. I, I, I am, I'm always a, uh, have a lot of admiration for, you know, there's a lot of really good um, pianists in Asia. I think that it's like, especially at a young age, people are very dedicated um, and you definitely see people at a very high level from a young age. Um, mm. It's really amazing. Mm. How, how's that in uh, UK? I mean, 
Uh, because I heard that I heard my friends who's from you who study from you uh, you Europe, and they told mm. me people walking on the road, everybody know how to play the instrument. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, mm, I wouldn't say that everybody knows how to play an instrument in. Europe. Um, and I would also say that you, you do get very dedicated students that really do excel, but it's, uh, it's not so common to see such great pianists at a young age, as opposed to in um, Asia, where I feel like mm. people work harder at a younger age to really mm. nail the skill. Mm. Like you see a lot of videos online of young pianists and they're incredible. <laughs> <laughs> which you don't often see as much in the West. I mean, maybe it's a dedication thing. <laughs> maybe it's Why do you think it is? Oh, no, no, sorry. I mean, maybe it's because of education in Asia. Our parents want us to be more competitions. Mm. Mm. Would mm. you say competition is more fierce? Is that why there's more competition? So you have to work harder to maybe stand out? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, so um, we talked a little bit about the musicals in um, Asia. How, how do you think um, specifically in China the musical scene is? Is it um, growing? Uh, because of coronavirus problem, so everything stopped now. Mm. And they are going... Um, they're going back now, uh, but still have a long way to go because now the audience only allow for 50%, not right. 100%. And, um, and now because of TV shows, there are so many stars who was seeing opera, but the musical now in China is much more famous. So many people who send opera change their style into musical theaters and who's mm. from uh, television singing competitions. Mm. And the production will, the production company will think about if these people can bring more audience into the theater, maybe they'll hire, hire them. Mm. So it's very, uh, it, it changed a lot. Bef like, uh, I mean, five years ago, it's not like that, but now much more like that. Mm. So um, you, you mean that the producers will often choose a star from TV or like some sort of singing competition and put them in a role to help with the promotion? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a little bit similar in, in the West um, as well. And um, there's mixed opinions on it, really. Some people really don't like it. They think that um, a talented person who's worked hard in drama school should get the role. And then others think they understand that the producers need to be able to sell tickets. Uh, so what do you think? Uh, in, in Western world, is there many casting in the same production? Like in Korea, I know there are they will do Jekyll and Hyde, and they have four Jekylls. The four right. actors, four actors who's Jekyll, three actors who's Lucy, and this happened in China also. So we will have like a three Jekylls and two Lucys, do two Emma. But I don't know that will happen in in Western world or not. Because I we usually have like one principal lead um, and then an understudy. Uh, mm. So usually it's just one person that is in the title role until they give up their contract and another actor comes along. Um, oh. But that's really interesting. So you have more than one in, in the role at the same time and they do different nights, right? Yeah, yeah. We will have uh, mm. many act actors and actresses for one role and we will change the schedule. So for audience, they can come to the theater to see different, different, different people work together. So mm. do you get sort of mega fans coming more than once because they want to see another actor do the same role? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. 
That's really interesting. <laughs> Maybe we should uh, attempt that in the West and have, and then it would give more people an opportunity to play the role as well. So, um, <laughs> what do they do? What do they do on their days off? Because in, in, you know, Broadway and West End, they have to do eight shows a week. If they're doing a share in the role, do they only do like three? A, three a week or something? Uh, yeah, maybe three or two a week and other times maybe they will go to other productions or they will do something else. Mm. Right. Not working there. Mm. Is, is it um, a full-time career for these people or do they have other jobs? Like, I'm not sure how developed the market is so uh, are the actors able to completely work on that project or do they have to do other stuff to subsidize it uh it depends on their background but most of them are full-time job for theaters right mm -hmm. and what about the ensemble because obviously they're not paid as much are they able to work full-time in the industry or do they have to do other jobs Oh, they will, they will do, uh, some of them will do full-time job because uh, our contract asks everybody to save time for the production. Right. So you can leave from the production. Uh, as soon as we start the show, if the, your ensemble, you must be there, hold there every day. But if you are lead role, maybe you, you may see uh, some actors or actresses, they will join two different productions in the same time. Mm. Like people who work in Spring Awakening, also who will uh, in Murder Ballad. Or right. people who work in Murder Ballad, also in uh, Rent or some production. Mm. 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 It's really interesting. Um, and what would you say is the kind of go-to place in Asia for musical theatre actors to train? Or is there a few places um, that they go to train as an actor in the field? Oh, most of them are trained in the school when they were in college. They studied mm. musical theatre. And uh, some of them, after they graduate from school, they will have a dance class, private dance class in some out uh, the school and I, I mean some some school like yamaha or or a dance school or right uh, Broadway dance center some kind of Broadway dance centers mm. or a steps in shanghai mm. Mm. so which colleges um would you say offer musical theater in china specifically that people go to to get their kind of uh ba or their like degree in musical theater? There's a lot, like uh, Shanghai, Shanghai Yuan, how to say that? Um, Shanghai, Shanghai Music Conservatoire, I think that one. Oh, uh, and also the school you was in, the Shanghai Xiju Drama, Drama. Mm. Uh, Shanghai Xiju Yuan. Yeah, Shanghai Xiju Yuan, <laughs> and Zhongyang Xiju Yuan in Beijing. Central? Central School, right? Uh, and also Beijing Dance Academy. Mm. Hmm. There's a lot also in Sichuan or in Chongqing or there's many schools everywhere mm, for musical and, theater. And um, are they continuing to, um, you know, improve their offering in these schools so that uh, people are getting kind of trained ready to go into the industry? Mm, I think maybe not, but some company will do that. Like uh, Shanghai, there is a school, Shijue, uh, Shijue Yishu Yuan in Shanghai. And the school is belongs to Li Dun. It's a producer of one company and he will do his work with the students and after these students graduate, they will join his team. Okay. Mm. So do you mean his like, is he an, does he have an agency or is it more like a rap company that he has for them? 
Uh, maybe it's a rap company. Uh, what is the uh, uh, actually meaning of about rap company? So what I mean is um, he kind of hires a pool of actors and they do um, a variety of shows throughout the year, but it's the same company that does them and it, they're like a group or is it that he just has an agency and hires them for each show? I think the first, it's the first one. The, ah. uh, the, uh, uh, because he has his own team and his own, own team did the many, many original musicals. So he needs uh, actors. Mm. And is that, where, does, where do they perform their shows? Is it at the Culture Square or somewhere else in Shanghai? Uh, they will have a tour, like oh, okay. uh, Shenzhen, Guangzhou. When, when, they, when they have a production and they will join the production for the rehearsal and have a show and they're getting, a, a, you know, the touring in China. Mm. So, you know, you talked earlier about the opera singers um, merging over into musical theatre style. Um, do they have to go to a vocal coach to adjust their technique or do they try and train themselves? Uh, maybe some of them will go to a vocal coach, but mm. there's not many vocal coach knows musical theatres in China. Uh, oh. So... Some of them will try to train themselves and the company will send them to some teachers to work with them or the company will uh, tell them work, to work with a music director before he joined the production. Mm. That's really interesting actually because um, on my first podcast I had um, a very good vocal coach friend on, her name's Louise Ryan and mm. um, she is um, a vocal coach to a lot of West End stars. So she was Lucy Jones's vocal coach from Waitress. Um, oh. Yeah and Charlotte Church who's a very famous singer in the UK as well. So if any of your uh, people want me to put you in touch with her, I'm sure we can because I want to create a nice community here <laughs> because she's perfect at changing from classical into musical theatre sound. Um, yeah. So when you're musically directing, um, do you ever have an issue where you try to make the voices blend because some people have like a more classical opera sound and others have a musical theatre sound? How do you mm. come across that challenge and solve it? Uh, when we when we were did, when we did the auditions for actors, uh, the sound is my my first uh, considering things and right. The style is the director, he, he or she will think about that, but I think it's a, it's a sound. So the sound and the range of his singing is my considering. Mm. Mm. And if I work, the people, work with the people who sing opera, uh, and our musical is a rock style, maybe I will work with him and work with our uh, vocal coaching together to find the sound. Mm. Mm, it's interesting. And um, from what I've seen, when I've seen a few different productions in China, um, you do have like clearly people that are trained in like classical and then you have sort of a younger cast that may be a bit more tuned into musical theatre. And I think that sometimes you can actually tell that. So it, it's going to be interesting to see in the future if it starts to blend more and you, and you because you can get a lead character that doesn't really think too much about maybe the acting it's very much about the voice yeah and um yeah it'd be great to try and get more integration i think <laughs> <laughs> there still have a long way to go for the musical theater in china or in asia mm. or Taiwan. Mm. yeah we still have yeah. a lot to learn but what's exciting is that because it's quite new to a certain extent, there's a lot of experimentation as well, which um, I certainly find is quite liberating because there's not so many set ways. Back in London, we have a lot of set ways. Here, there's a lot of opportunity to try new things as well. Mm, 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 mm. Because there are many companies who want to do the music calls. So mm. there are more and more new companies come join to the marketing together, to competitions together. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure what you think, but I'm always amazed by the marketing um, in 
the Asian musicals. As a, like in the West, we kind of have like um, show brochures and t-shirts, things like this. But I've noticed that in China, when I've gone to a musical, there's like, everything's branded. You have amazing photo opportunities. What do you think about that? The difference? I think it's cool, but <laughs> I prefer <laughs> Western's way. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm. What do you uh, mean by that? Uh, the both of two two different. Uh, I still like to go to the stage, uh, the the backstage store to visit the actors and take the photos. Mm. When I was in New York or when I was in West End, and I will do that in China, too, but not much because. Uh, some of them are my colleague. <laughs> if I <laughs> visit them at the backstage door, <laughs> it's a little weird. <laughs> mm. Yeah, hi, I, I was with you last week for dinner and now I'm asking you for your autograph. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do a picture? Oh my God, it's so shy, no. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I understand. Um, uh. So, what would be your dream musical to direct, um, to musically direct? My dream? Oh, I have so many musicals I love. I want to be in like, <laughs> like Waitress. I love Waitress so much. And Jesus Christ Superstar. I love that show. Mm. And also there is, uh, oh, I don't know how to say there's too many. <laughs> in the Heights. Or oh, In the Heights. I love In the Heights. I love In the Heights. And, uh, Dog fight. There's yes. uh, Pasek and Paul. Pasek and Paul, right? Pasek and Paul. And also um, a little shop of Haro. <laughs> little shop of horrors. Yeah. Uh, Rocky Haro show. <laughs> Rocky so Rocky any Rocky. musical you want to do. <laughs> I want to do everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm the I, same. Yeah, I enjoy to being an audience. So I, I really enjoy to being in the part of the musical theater. So I always tell my friends who are in the production companies or who are the same work with me. I always tell them that I can do many, many jobs. Mm. Uh, and all I ask is stay working in the musical theater. <laughs> so if you need Thank somebody you. to play the keyboard, I'm okay. If you need somebody to uh, do the uh, mm, piano things or uh, playing for the auditions, I'm okay. <laughs> that's great. I, I, I think that's, um, you know, something that will take you far. And I hope to um, learn from that as well. I think it's great to take as many opportunities as possible if you can, if you can fit it in. So that's mm. a really nice, um, way to think about it. I think some actors could learn from that as well. And maybe, because sometimes people maybe think that they'll wait for the perfect role and maybe turn down something um, and then end up doing nothing. So it is quite important to just be humble and take things, even if you've been a musical director, next mm -hmm. time maybe to take a piano job and then back to musical directing. That's how we have to work, right? Also, sometimes you can work with a director be he be the director's assistant or mm. just work for the producers because the more you learn more you work mm. yeah and it will help you in the future you don't know when you will use that mm. work ethic and attitude is everything isn't it so if you're a nice person to work with and you've got a good work ethic then great <laughs> you know mm. um so what would what advice would you give to somebody that uh, would like to be a musical director um, to a young listen, person? To a young person, I will tell mm. them maybe listen more music as much as you can, and more style, different style, and practice your instruments for be prepared for every opportunities. Not prepare for the auditions, not only prepare for the auditions. Sometimes I will practice Stephen Sondheim's music or West Side Story Bernstein when I was alone in my house. 
not for the com not it's not for audition it's just for myself to to much more familiar to my piano mm. yeah keep your skills fresh and um, alive right yeah yeah oh great that's great advice thank you <laughs> <laughs> so um is there anything that you feel that I haven't asked you that you'd like to share with our audience? Oh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, actually, I'm really nervous about speaking English, <laughs> but, but, but yeah, and thank you for you inviting me to- Oh no. Uh, it's really, it's really, so, it's, it's so kind. Mm, mm, mm. I love, um, you know, the fact that I can, um, speak to you on a virtual platform and we can welcome in a new audience to listen about some of the stuff that happens in Asia. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I haven't seen you for a long time since we were in Beijing, like when was it? Maybe a year ago or a year and a half ago. So it's so nice to catch up anyway. Yeah, yeah, me too. And I remember the dance part you told us is wow. <laughs> <laughs> Especially turn, turn, turn. Oh, it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, because you were in you were in the dance uh, masterclass I was doing as a, a dancer, yeah, and you were you were really good. No, no, <laughs> not good. But others are good. I, I think it's a really good class for the students. They learn mm. the new choreographers. Mm. Totally, yeah. yeah, it's great. <laughs> they, mm, they need to know more, not only in their familiar things. Mm. Yeah, I think, yeah, as a dancer, it's great to take class from different people to get a different um, style. And um, yeah, I think, especially mm. in China, I find that the students work really hard in the dance studio. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's really a similar work. story to the music. <laughs> mm, mm. And especially working in musical theater, you have to know many, many styles, not only, not only jazz or only ballet or only mm. tap the more you know, it will help you to join more productions. Mm. Yeah, because I, I think um, acro and uh, contemporary are quite important as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I totally agree. Just get as many styles under your belt, so to speak, so that if you're in an audition, you're prepared to show anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We want to see it. So I'm going to ask you one final thing. What does musical theatre mean to you? Uh, the musical theatre is, uh, is a way I look the world. I see the world. Oh, I see the world from the musical theatre's eyes. Mm. So when I'm walking on the street, something I think is really funny, I will think, oh, Maybe I can uh, collaborate that idea into a new work or something. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, that's so lovely. Thank mm. you so much. It's been absolutely wonderful speaking to you. Um, and yeah, I hope to catch you soon if uh, we, um, with, if this COVID can shift and we get to <laughs> um, uh -huh. meet up in one of the cities that we work in. I'd love to see you. Mm, mm. Me, me too. <laughs> I would love to see you soon. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for coming on today. Um, and I hope to invite you on again in the future to hear about more of your work. So um, for now, I'll say goodbye. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. This has been Director Chat, the musical theatre podcast with me, Christian Bullen, and my wonderful guest, May from Taiwan. Thank you very much for listening. If you've enjoyed the show, please do leave us a comment. And if you're feeling generous, leave us a like. We'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.